When COVID-19 hit the country in March 2020, the effects were almost immediate. Now, majority of Kenyans traveled with job losses, high cost of living, high fuel prices, and inflation, just to mention a few. And as Kenyans reeled under the weight of the struggling economy, the need for money to survive the harsh economic times escalated. Some Kenyans turned to the lending service providers for quick loans. In April 2013, when President Uhuru Kenyatta was sworn in, Kenya's total debt was at 1.8 trillion shillings. If the loan was shared among Kenyans as at that time, each citizen would owe about 40,000 shillings. Seven years down the line, the country's debt has more than quadrupled to 7.7 .7 trillion shillings. With the current population estimates, every Kenyan owes more than 140,000 shillings. But while the national government has been on a borrowing streak, so have Kenyans, a move that has seen the sudden growth of the digital lending market. PricewaterCoopers Senior Associate for Regulatory and Finance, Christopher Ndegwa, says the growth of the sector was inevitable. These lending platforms have really come to solve a, a problem that has been there before, which is basically financial inclusion. Now when you look at traditional financial institutions, they require things like a credit rating, uh, a past history, and some of the requirements that they have, unfortunately, it's only those who are in either formal employment or who have really uh, mature businesses that can access them. So what these platforms have done is they've enabled the youth and other people who are often termed as the unbanked to be able to access credit. So that's why there's a proliferation of the use of these platforms by a myriad of people. Characterized by easy access and guaranteed availability of loans, affordable low interests, convenience and easy use of the applications, the digital lending market is fast rising. However, unknown to the majority of people, the advantages of the digital lending platforms could be leading them into a debt trap that would spell doom for their future financial stability. Metropole Corporation's General Chief Data Officer Edna Mulwa says, Borrowers often make mistakes while taking loans, leaving them more vulnerable. One of the many mistakes that people make when they are taking loans or taking credits is do you have a plan of how you are going to pay? Uh, there are those who miss payments, so you took a loan and you have a scheduled way of paying your, lo your credits, your loan, but you miss your payments. When you miss your payments, this increases interest and the loan you took becomes more expensive than initially you expected. And then there are those at the initial stage of taking a loan, they take multiple loans at a go. People have learned how to beat the system and they know when my credit profile is good at let's say this date, first of June I have cleared all the other loans, I'll go to multiple lenders at a go. They will all generate a good report and give you a loan. Then you end up having multiple loans that you can only afford to pay one of the loans and the rest end up being in default. According to the latest statistics by consumer intelligence firm Real Analytics, majority of Kenyans place digital lending platform top on their priority list of credit sources. The data also add that a majority of 55% have acquired loans from digital lending applications at least once, with a majority of 66% being urban dwellers. 
But what are the consequences of taking loans without proper planning? With time, depending on the duration, so there is a default within 30 days, then default within 60 days, then default within 90. So when you are past your 90 day, which is around three months, you become a negative listed customer. Your profile was positive, then now it changes to a negative listing. So your profile, you'll find your score will be in the ranges of below 500. And in turn, you will not even afford credit going forward. So everyone else who will check your profile, 90 days later, after your default, you will not have you will not be a good customer to them. So you will not afford credit in future. So in the next, depending on the loan also, if it's a mobile loan, automatically you will not get a mobile loan from any of the lenders. Mimi nikuwa na chikuwa kwa mshuari. Hakini saizi chikui. Nikuwa na chikuwa kwa KCB. Saizi sasa, hata simu kulipa pole pole saizi chikuwa. Wana nionyesha tuko CRB. For defaulters, reduced credit score is not the only issue that they should be worried about. There are long-term consequences that could affect one's future investment plans. Once you get a loan, five years from now can be two scenarios. You made a payment, you fully settled your loan, your profile will be good five years from now because it will show this is a person who takes credit and they are able to pay in good time. Two. <clears throat> you did not make your payment. Five years from now, your score will have reduced to about 300, 200. You are in a space where you want to start a business as a youth. You want to take credit. You go to a bank. You say, I, I want to take a loan. Here is, this is my profile. When they check the CRB, <clears throat> they find you have a loan that you defaulted five years ago which at this level is a write-off. So immediately is a red flag to them because they know this person will not pay my loan. So how will you finance your business if you're looking for financing through a bank? On the regulatory front, in August, Parliament's Finance and National Planning Committee approved the Central Bank of Kenya Amendment Bill 2021 that seeks to regulate the digital lending market. The amendments, among other things, sought to control borrowers from defaulting with one lender and moving on to another lender. So looking at a scenario where you have an errant borrower who keeps jumping from platform to platform, it really is a matter of time until they can't do this any longer. Now when we have um, certain aspects of the ecosystem working together such as credit information sharing, default rate and such and such, it allows all the players in the industry to have much more transparency and have a better picture of what's going on. This then prevents an errant borrower, one from either being overborrowed and over indebted, having an inability to pay, and it also prevents one person from jumping from one platform to another. Just the same way you have a similar mechanism between the traditional lending institutions, it would also be helpful if these, these other institutions had the same. Data from Real Analytics also indicates that Mshuari is among the most popular among five key digital lending platforms at 40%, followed by Tala at 36%, Fuliza at 30%, Branch at 23%, and KCB Mpesa at 22%. Other popular lenders are Zenka, EasyLoan, Timiza, MCOP Cash, Okolea and Copper Cash. With the ballooning digital lending space, calls for credit literacy has started taking center stage. According to Edna Mulwa, the education system will be critical towards achieving credit literacy in the country. I would say there are those youths who have been able to make good out of the getting loans. They've become good businessmen, they've made money, they've made... And for the few who are still not aware of this whole credit space, it will be good to have more education, uh, probably even in campus level, high school level. On his part, Christopher Ndegwa says lenders should take responsibility in giving knowledge and information to the borrowers as they have direct contact with them. Since a large majority of the youth have been onboarded onto this, it would make sense to focus their efforts on this segment of the population. Now making sure that they understand the impact of how much they're borrowing, what they use it for, and just some of the terms, the interest rate, the repayment terms, these are already made known to the borrower when they sign on to the terms and conditions, but we need now more awareness so that all the people who are using these platforms are aware of what they're getting into. 
During the Mashuja Day celebration, President Uhuru Kenyatta issued a moratorium for those with loans worth 5 million shillings or less. Despite the move by the president, a lot of Kenyans still do not understand what credit literacy is. I mean, when to borrow, why to borrow, or rather the consequences of failure to repay their loans on time. Until then, majority of them will still remain vulnerable to the creditors. For Metropole TV, I'm Vincent Odiambo.